we now have the ability to access our application from our browser. There are no restrictions on to which records we have access to. Let's go ahead and add tables to contain our users, roles, and user roles, and configure our security to point to these tables. In Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio, let's add a users table. Next, let's add a roles table. Finally, let's add a user roles many to many table to link the two together. Make sure to save the diagram. Our database has now been configured for membership. We will now need to enable the custom membership provider and point it to these tables. In the app generator, click on the project name, press settings, and membership. Let's enable custom membership and role providers. I will go ahead and paste in the basic membership configuration. This configuration will assign the table users as containing our users for our application with the columns user ID, username, password, and email configured with its relevant functionality in the membership provider. The table roles will be bound to the roles feature with role ID and role name as well as user roles with role ID and user ID. We can go ahead and press finish. We will need to refresh to ensure that the My Profile controller, which contains all the relevant login, sign up, and forgot password forms will be added to our application. We have changed the database schema, so make sure to enable the checkbox and press refresh. We can finally generate our app. We can see that the home screen of the app now has two controls, the sitemap and the instructions. The instructions will contain a login button allowing us to access the login form. We can go ahead and log in with one of the two standard accounts that have been automatically inserted. Once logged in, we can now access the data pages of our app. Note that we have no way of managing our users and roles at this time. We need to go ahead and add models for these tables in order to offer a way for our users to control these records. In the app generator, click on the project name. Let's create a few models. First, let's start with users. Roles. And user roles. Let's go ahead and press finish. and generate the app. 
Additional pages have been added for each database entity in the same manner as any other database entity that you may add. Let's create a dashboard page for our membership system to allow administrators to manage users. Open the project designer for our project. First, let's remove the three automatically generated pages, Users, Roles, and User Roles. Next, let's add a membership page. The name will be Membership. We will also only allow administrators to view this page. Let's create a membership dashboard controller and create a dashboard that we'll place on the membership page. Switch to the Controllers tab. Create a new controller. Let's create data view fields from users and roles on the membership dashboard. Select users and roles and drop it onto Membership Dashboard. Next, we'll need to create a view to contain these fields. Let's give it the ID Dashboard1 of type form, the label Membership. And let's save it. Let's create two tabs using categories. The first tab will have the tab text, users. The second will have the tab text, roles. Let's go ahead and bind each relevant data view field to its category. Finally, let's bind the dashboard one view onto the dashboard page. Let's also make sure that the action buttons are not displayed for this form, as there will be no actions. Next, let's customize the users and roles controllers. First, we'll want to display a checkbox list of roles for under each user by implementing a many-to-many -many field. This field will have the name roles. The item style will be checkbox list. The list of items that this field will display will be roles. The location where it'll write the many to many records will be user roles. Go ahead and save the field and bind it to all three views. We will also want to implement a password confirm field by adding the field to the user's controller. Let's give it the name password confirm with the same length as the password field. This field will be marked as virtual. Go ahead and save the field. And let's bind it to the Edit Form 1 and Create Form 1 views.
Next, let's add password validation to the user's controller when any insert or update operations are executed. Let's create a new business rule. of type C sharp or Visual Basic. This rule will execute on insert or update during the phase to execute. Save the business rule. We'll need to trigger a regeneration of the application to ensure that the rule file is created. Press browse. Once generation is complete, we can press Edit Rule. We can now edit our business rule using Visual Studio. Let's rename the instance variable to user. Let's do password validation whenever the password field is modified. If the password and password confirm fields do not match, we will throw an exception and display it in the user interface. Otherwise, let's go ahead and validate the user password to ensure it matches the rules. The validate user password method will throw an exception if the password doesn't match the correct structure as required by the membership configuration. If it succeeds, let's go ahead and encode the user password before saving. Go ahead and save the business rule. Next, let's add a business rule to enforce security on users. This will ensure that any user that does not have the role administrators will not have permission to access any of the user's records. Create a new business rule. Of type C sharp or Visual Basic. With command name select phase before and save the rule. We'll need to generate as before. And then let's press edit rule. If the current user does not have the role administrators, then we'll throw an exception. This will ensure row level security on our user's records. Next, let's customize our roles controller. On the edit form of each role, we would like to display a list of users associated with that role. We can create a data view field by dragging and dropping the users controller under roles. Next, let's bind this newly created data view field called users onto the edit form of roles. Finally, let's add a similar Let's add a similar business rule as the one we created on users to ensure that no user has access to the roles records if they do not have the administrative role.
This will throw an exception if any users not in an administrative role attempt to access this controller, whether it be by the user interface, the REST API, or using the JavaScript console in the browser. Let's go ahead and try out our new membership page. We can see that our page has a list of users and a list of roles. Let's go ahead and create a new role. And let's assign this manager's role to one of our users. We can see that the manager's role has been applied to the user.